All right, guys, check this out. Iman does this edit, my edit. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to edit like Iman Ghazi in Final Cut Pro. Let's get started. So this is the video we're gonna use, a talking head video. I'll just drag and drop in the timeline. And I'll be leaving this video down below. You can download and practice your hands on it. When you look at Iman's edit, it has this vignette and this how to create vignette in Final Cut Pro. Go to the effect section side, click on that scroll down and click on mask and key in then scroll down and click on vignette just drag and drop on your video so right here you can see it has this black side on the edges so with that go to the right side of the software on size let's work on that let's drag it a little bit to the left side and then with the fall off you just drag it so we can extend it a lot on the edges so i can go for something like this now we're done, let me show you guys what we have. So now let me just take the effect off and look on the screen. I'll take it on again. So you can see it has this dark side on the edges and that makes it easy to draw the focus of the viewers to the subject in the video. So with that, we just click on titles and generator side, scroll down and click on solids. Then click on custom, drag and drop on the top of the video. So let's make it the same length as the video. Then go to the effect section side, still with the mask and key selected. Click on the graduated mask, drag and drop on the solid. So with this, just hold on this down one, rotate it to the top, and then drag this down to the lower third. So we just want to darken the lower third so we have a good contrast whenever you introduce a text or image on the downside. And that's what Iman does a lot in his edit. So let me just soften it more and drag this a little bit down to this very side now we need to animate that to come in and with this take your playhead to the very first frame of it go to the right side click on video inspector then scroll down make a keyframe on opacity we're going to do some animation on opacity then go 15 frames forward and make another keyframe on opacity then use this arrow to go to the first keyframe we created and it's going to take you right to the first place then on opacity just turn it to zero so now i'll play and show you guys it comes in nice and clean but it looks so harsh so we need to make that come in very smooth so with that click on the custom solid Control v to bring the video animation out then you can see on opacity, when you go to this very side, click on the drop down menu and it's gonna bring the graphs out. So with this, take your case out to the middle side, right click on that and choose ease. So we can have both ease out and in at the same time. Now I just close it and play and show you guys what we have. So with this, go to your YouTube homepage click on videos and we're gonna use three images on this. He uses three, but you can use four if you want to. Then go to this very side, click on that and switch the appearance to dark mode. We wanna use the dark mode since that's what he uses in his edit. So we just click on dark dim and it's gonna switch to dark dim. So now just press shift command and four to bring this icon out. Then I'm just gonna select these three images and make sure you select the text too. So from here, you can go to your desktop, you can find it right there and then drag and drop in the media side. But I already have that, so I'm gonna skip that side. So with that, just drag and drop in the timeline and make it the same length as the rest of them. Now the next thing is to cut the images out and with this if you have Photoshop it's going to be easy on your side but for the sake of majority who don't have Photoshop we're going to use Final Cut Pro to cut the images out. So with this just click on this image then go to the effect section side click on shape mask drag and drop on the image. So we're going to start with the first image on this side so we have to drag it to that very side then go to the right side on feather, let's change it to zero. Then with the curvature, let's take it to somewhere 15 to 20. So we can have the edges, the round edges on this very side. So from here, I'll just increase that to select only the image and try to cut the dark side out and also select the text too. So I can come down more. So on this side, just take your time to select it nicely. So with that done, we need to do for the rest of the two. 
and with that just click on the image press option and drag upwards and for the sake of not getting ourselves confused let's rename this so the down one i'm going to right click that rename clip and i'm going to write one then with this top one i'll rename it two now click on number two so we can select this very two and with that go to the right side and go to shape mask now click on this transform to bring the rest out and over there we're just going to move the x axis so we can select just the middle part and then with that done we're just going to duplicate this one once again press option and drag upwards and then rename that to number three and just like we did earlier on go to the right side and click on this transform menu drop down menu and use the x axis move it to select the third one now we have three separate images on the screen select all of them and go to the right side we're going to use transform on scale or let's change it to somewhere 80 to 90. then on y axis i'll just drag them down below to this very side on the screen now we need to animate the images to come in individually so with this we'll start with number one take your playhead to the very first frame of it click on that and go to the right side of the software scroll down on position make a keyframe over there then go 20 to 25 frames and make another keyframe on position now use this arrow to go to the first keyframe we created on y axis just drag it down till it disappear and now i'll play and show you guys it comes in from the bottom and we need to do the same thing for this very tool but with that take your playhead to the very first frame of it and go 10 frames forward then drag this number two to that very side on this playhead so this comes in and then 10 frames later the second one will come in and then click on number one command c to copy then click on number two shift command v to bring the video attribute out and we're just going to copy the transform so we need to take shape mask off and click on maintain so we'll maintain the keyframes then click on paste and it's going to have the same animation on this on number two i'll play and show you guys and this will come in later so now we need to do the same thing for number three and with that take your playhead to the first frame of number two and this time around go 15 frames forward and drag number three to that very side then click on number three shift command v to bring the video attribute out on take shape mask and leave the rest take and then click on maintain so we will maintain the keyframes then click on paste and now i'm going to play and show you guys what we have now the next thing when you look at immense edit when the images comes in it has this shaking or floating vibe a little bit to it and this is how we're going to do it go to the left side click on titles and generator side scroll down and select mcam rig if you don't have this plugin it is free from motion vfx i'll leave a card here and also a link to it down below we're going to use this for that effect so with that i'll just click on that drag and drop in the timeline and let me make it the same length as the rest of them so with that on the timeline click on that go to the right side and click on test inspector side and then turn off in and out animation then scroll down on camera angle change it to zero and also with the blur amount change it to zero then scroll down with background opacity take it to zero and then with rego on and off that's the effect we're going to use for this turn it on and take the strength to somewhere 0.1 we don't want it to be too much so 0.1 works perfectly with this now we have something like this and as you can see it's affecting the video too so from here we just select this top ones without selecting the video and the customs we're going to leave that alone right click that and create a new compound clip let's name it images so when you look at it when it comes in it has this small floating vibe to it and iman does that a lot in his edit so now the next thing is to add some motion blur to the animation to get motion blur in final cut pro you have to download a free one that you can get on youtube with the one that i have i don't really remember exactly where i got it but i'll leave a link to a very good one from ryan angle it has the same effect so when you download it you can find it on titles 
mine is Vato, but when you have right angle, it's gonna be the different name. Just open this compound clip. So double click that to open it and then click on the motion blur, drag and drop on top of it. Let's make it the same length as this. And with motion blur, it's quite strong. So that's the last thing you always do when you're doing animation with your images. So now I'll play and show you guys how it looks like. It comes in and you can see it has this blurry to it. So with that, we can just go back to the normal timeline and play and show you guys. So as you can see, the motion blur makes it so hard to play it in a normal speed. So the next thing that Imans does a lot is jump cut. That's quite simple. Just take it to where you want to have the jump cut at. Command B to make a cut there. Then select this second part. Go to the right side. On scale, change it to somewhere 130 or depending on how much you want to zoom in. Then I'm just going to drag it down a little bit. So when it plays, it jumps right there and he does that a lot in his edit. And with this, you can also hide some pauses in your videos or your talking head video that you don't want it to show. So with this, I'm just going to bring our second video in, drag it and drop it somewhere here. And then go to your browser, go to YouTube and type in foam burn or overlay and then drag and drop in your media side. So with that, I have it in my media already. And this looks exactly like the one Iman uses in his edit. I'll leave a link to that video down below. You can check on that later. So with that, I'm just gonna drag and drop in the timeline. Then I'll go to where I want it to start from. So somewhere here, I want it to start there and just trim this side off. So with this transition, usually you go to somewhere four to eight frames for this effect to work nicely. And with this tutorial, I'm gonna go for four frames. So just four, and then I'll trim this end to this side. And with that, let me just spread this so I can easily place it. You need to place it right in the middle. So the half of it will be on this very video and the half of it will be on this video too. Then click on the foam bend transition or your overlay. Then go to the right side. On blend mode, change it to screen. So now I'll play and show you guys how it looks like. In this video, I talk about a free plugin I think every Final Cut Pro user should have his hands on. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.